Hello and welcome to County Board Wrap Up. This is our regular deep dive into the important decisions the County Board took at its monthly meeting. I'm your host, Kara O'Donnell, and joining us as always today, we have County Board Chair Libby Garvey, and today we have a special guest, County Board Member John Vistat. Thank you both for being here today. Pleasure to be here. Likewise. Well, let's dive right in. One of the big decisions from the board meeting was the affordable housing in the Westover neighborhood. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, about and that, that really is John's neighborhood, um, but it's, it's, it's an unusual neighborhood in some ways for affordable housing, um, and I think the board was really excited to see this plan. And I, John, I'd like to have you talk about it a little bit, because I say it's your neighborhood. Sure. As, as the chair indicated, I live literally two to three blocks away from the northernmost section of the uh, apartment concentration in Westover. Um, it's, it's an interesting area because there are over 700 units in multiple one-story brick buildings. For the most part, there's a, there's a few townhouse-looking buildings and so forth, but it's really a very vibrant, uh, well-accepted uh, area uh, for both market rate affordable housing and what we call committed affordable housing. In other words, committed affordable housing is uh, housing that is designated and kept for folks of a certain uh, income, whereas market rate affordable housing is affordable just by virtue of its rent in the marketplace. Uh, but we had noticed and the community had noticed that over the last several years a number of those long, uh, long-standing buildings, that a lot of which date back uh, into the 40s okay. and even the 30s, right. uh, were bulldozed. Uh, the seller, uh, the, the, the owner of the unit, the building would sell it uh, to a developer, bulldozed for uh, upscale luxury townhouses. Now, all that's fine up to a point, but there was a growing concern in the community that we were losing that housing. Uh, and the county has long had an ethos of, of uh, providing as best we can and in a cost-efficient manner affordable housing uh, for, uh, for those who need it. And we're very lucky that APA uh, was really able to buy. They went in and bought some of the buildings or got an agreement to buy. They needed some support for us and they are going to then make them committed committed affordable units. And one of the things about these, these are older developments, as John said, it's like the 30s and 40s, you know, brick and a lot of green area around. Um, and they're really kind of treasured, kind of major landmarks for the community. And I think everybody loves it, whether they live there or not. And it really, it's a, it's a very important part of the community. Um, and with APA making this purchase, that somewhat with our help, they're going to be providing, you know, the affordable housing, protecting it. Um, and it also kind of keeps green space. It's, it's sort of a win-win all the way around, I think. And, and I, I think another, another important um, note, in addition to the fact that the affordable housing is already there, it fits in with the scale right. of the neighborhood, we're not adding appreciable density here. Um, uh, many of these units are just one-bedroom units. Uh, so we do have crowded schools in that immediate neighborhood, but um, there will not be an, a big influx of new people uh, with this preservation initiative. Um, so APA, we're, we're, uh, we're allocating about $11 million out of our affordable housing investment fund. Um, that is not a grant. That money will be paid back over time uh, by APA. Um, uh, as a result of the financing that they're also securing with a private bank. So it's not just public money going in, it's, a, it's, it's private money as well for 68 units. 62 units have already been destroyed, so this will preserve uh, 68 units, and there may be the prospect of, of being able to do a little more, but this is an important first step. And you know, we might touch just briefly, I think, on the historic designation question, although that say, didn't it's come up. Part of that charm of Westover yeah. is near where you talked about the brick, the green space. Now, there has been some discussion about a historic designation. Well, well we had what, a request from a citizen. Go ahead. Right. Okay. What happened is we have a process um, through our Historic Affairs and Landmark Review Board, HALRB, whereby a citizen, whether they live in the neighborhood or not, can file a petition asking for historic designation. Now, that historic designation comes with certain requirements and strings. Uh, the petition was filed for a historic designation in the entire Westover neighborhood, not just the apartment buildings, but the Westover Business District along Washington Boulevard and the literally hundreds of single-family homes in Westover. Now, naturally, that set off some alarm bells. Um, you know, we, we were all very concerned about property rights. Uh, 
And so the petition is kind of wending its way through. There's going to be a hearing on that historic designation on Wednesday, November 30th, uh, exact time and uh, time of day. It'll be in the evening, but the place still remains to be determined. But that's really going to be the first concrete step where the community can weigh in. We're certainly going to give weight to the perspectives of the property owners, whether they own the apartment building, a single family house, or uh, a business along the business district. Um, so there's some relationship between historic designation and affordable housing, but, but, but not necessarily. And I think most of the community community's focus is really on those apartment buildings, on the affordable housing, much less so the business district and the single family homes. I guess the other thing I, I, would, uh, I would point out is when we have taken the local historic designation previously, we actually have over 30 uh, local historic designation districts in the county. Um, they tend to be mostly individual sites like churches, cemeteries, um, you know, older homes, and we have given great weight to the perspectives right. of those owners. I think about the only, the only um, neighborhood, uh, Libby, in the county and, and Kara that could be considered even somewhat analogous would probably be Maywood. Uh, and so the Maywood community voted, um, there was some opposition, uh, but uh, the board did, did designate the Maywood community as a historic district. So if, there, if, if a Maywood homeowner wants to put a new roof on or new windows or somehow architecturally change their home, they have to go before the HALRB. Um, I and think I'd want to take it back just a little bit to yeah, Westminster because I think yeah. people are a little bit worried about it. Um, it. This is a lot. You mentioned that first train. There's going to be another one. This is like a multi-year process, sure. and we really rarely um, uh, designate something historic if the owners don't exactly. don't want us exactly. to. So people should not be too concerned. And in fact, it's already got some federal designation, and the um, APA as they move forward, that's going to be some of their tax funding mm -hmm. is going to depend on that. So I think it's going to be preserved historically. Whether we'll do more, um, that remains to be seen. But it's a long process. And I, I think people should not be too worried at this point. And, and again, as I said, um, you know, we're going to give great weight to the property yeah. owners. There's this community meeting on November 30th. It's going to take a while. And by the way, um, folks can go to our county webpage to keep up with the goings on here. Yeah, um, we so. have a good webpage that's already been established. If you just go to www.arlingtonva.us, you can get the particulars and the Westover. documents. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of other things happened at yeah, this there meeting. Are. Yeah. Let's move on and talk about I know we talked about this at the last county board wrap-up, and that's Fire Station 10. Mm. And we've made some decisions on that. Before Looks that, we're talking about Fire Station. We talk right. about fire stations, fire stations a lot. Yeah. Stations a lot. Um, but let's talk about a decision was made. Um, let's talk about a little, a little bit, bit about, about fire station. Well, fire station 10, the decision was made some time ago to rebuild it and keep it on the same spot. Of course. Um, for and temporary. for temporary, and we had it worked out something with, and it was a, it's a very complex site because there, Penzance owns some of the land, schools own some of the land, we own some of the land, and it's right, you know, kind of in the heart of the courthouse, Roslyn area, and we realized if we could work together, the three different owners, we could have a much better project, but of course that adds complexity. Of course. So at first, what we looked at is we, we, it's fine to rebuild a fire station, but when you rebuild a fire station, you can't do without a fire station. It's got, you have to keep the fire station, so either you build it somewhere else and move in or you, you move out rebuild it and move back um, and in this case originally the idea was the fire station would stay there the new one would be built right kind of around it and there would be a move it was realized that really for, for sort of construction reasons a lot of financial reasons um, it probably would be to everyone's benefit if we could temporarily move the fire station rebuild it and then they will move back in and Penzance is providing that that's one of one of the many amenities they're providing with this project uh, so then the question was where do we put it um, and originally staff had suggested putting it on the uh, site where there will be a field eventually for the HB Woodlawn Program School um, there were a lot of people concerned about that understandable they didn't want to wait for the field um, the school's undergoing, it's going to be just a major construction site for a while anyway, but it's going to take a while to make that switch, so the school would have to be, even when it was finished, without a field for a short, for about a year and a half. Um, so people were concerned, can't we put it somewhere else? And we thought, well, we don't think so, but we'll look. Um, and staff really did look very hard and came up really with only one other site that would work. Um, they were asked to particularly look at a site in Roslyn called the Holiday Inn site, but that really just was not going to, there just wasn't enough room to put a fire station there. That was not going to work. The only possibility really was this roadside green park. 
Um, and obviously the people who live around Roadside Green Park were pretty upset about the idea that they would be losing their park. And I think the major issue, one of the, one of the issues for the county board on this decision was the park. Yes, we would restore it afterwards. Um, and everybody's got to put up with a little bit while we're going, undergoing construction. But they have big old trees. Sure. Trees don't move very well. So it would be very, it would take a long time to actually restore it to where it is. So that was part of the thinking, I think, that went into it. And I'll invite John to sort of, to, to, you know, talk about a little bit from his viewpoint. But um, we did decide to go back to what the staff had originally recommend, recommended, put it on the school. And we'll be working very hard with schools to make sure that all of the, the drop-offs of the students work and things, and things work. And I, I think we can do it. Um, it's just part of living in an urban it's area temporary. and trying to build. And it's temporary, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a great challenge, as, as the chair indicated, because there were um, three owners. I mean, Penzance, the developer, the county, and the school system all own different chunks of land on that West Roslyn site. Um, but I think a, a big thing to stress is that the county board and really our staff, the manager's office, really did go the distance in, in looking at every possible potential other location for that temporary fire station. In fact, they looked literally at about two dozen sites. Yeah. Um, we had on our website um, a grid showing the various metrics that we need. You know, we have to consider response time for that fire station. We have to consider practical things like traffic signaling, uh, topography, utility easements, and so forth. They looked at public sites. They looked at private sites. Uh, they looked at repurposing certain parts of, 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 of Roslyn, but it all came down to really back to where they thought was going to be best in the first place. But I do think we, we demonstrated to the, to the Roslyn community that we exhausted um, any other possible yeah. viable option. And to option. the HB community, and I think the whole community. I right. think we're working really I mean, hard the to other be transparent, and I, I think we need to probably get on to some well, other let, subjects let me just, here. Well, let me just also interject here. Keep in mind that, you know, this is going to also be a, a new, uh, the site of, of a new Wilson school. The mm -hmm. HB Woodlawn program is moving over to Wilson. So the school board and the superintendent of schools feel strongly that this is going to be able to work. Yeah, They're going to be gonna able work. to solve and deal with a traffic ingress and egress, the safety of our kids, um, the Stratford component of those, those, those kids, those students have certain uh, needs uh, and the superintendent feels strongly that we can make things work. Uh, the school board, uh, frankly, and the county board, uh, uh, you know, under the new chair are really working in very close harmony, harmony with each other and we're getting a lot we positive. We are, and it's an exciting done. project, Great. yep. Great. Well, we're going to take a short break yep. right now, and then when we come back, we'll be talking with the chair and board member John Bystead about the board's action on Boston Quarter. Stay with us. Welcome back to County Board Wrap-Up, our monthly chat with the chair and sometimes other board members about the important actions the board takes at its monthly meetings that shape our community and affect us all. Let's talk a little bit about Ballston Quarter. Now, we've talked about this plenty of times here on County yeah. Board Wrap-Up, but we've made some very important steps forward at this most recent meeting. Let's talk a little bit about the development yeah. plans here. Yeah, well, one of the things, the thing we started out at Locke that was sort of is, is simple to sort of grasp is the bridge. Yes. That was clearly so important to people when we were, were going through this project. Um, and they, you know, there was money in there to do a bridge. We're going to keep the bridge. That was the first kind of major decision. It was design. And everybody kind of looked at it and thought, oh, just your basic design doesn't look too, that's not kind of what we had in mind. So the architects got together every, with the community. Everybody worked and came up with, I think, what's a pretty cool design. It is cool it's very design. exciting. It is costing a little more. I think it's worth it. And that, that gets a little bit to why we're doing Boston Quarter. Um, you know, Boston, it was Boston Mall. And I got some, my, my daughter said, I remember when that was the new mall, Mom. She was about that high. <laughs> so, uh, so, Libby, yeah. I just have to interject <laughs> yes. here. I remember when it was parking, which, which, was the, which was the mall before Boston Mall, I know. which didn't come until 1986. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, so we're on we're on a roll here. We're we're onto the third iteration. It happens when you hang around for a while. Um, this this is really exciting because Boston Mall. It was fine when it started, but you know the whole model economic model for malls just isn't working very well. People want to live a different kind. They're just not very interested in going to the old classic mall, which this was a little bit more, even though it was in the heart of Boston. 
So it was clear that the mall, too, was just getting a little sh shabby, I guess is what you'd say. And everybody was kind of saying, we've got to do something about the mall. So Forest City, the owner, um, has really taken a huge step, uh, and it's a very exciting project for them. They're a national company, but this is sort of one of their um, really prime uh, projects that they're doing right now, and kind of turning it inside out and making it sort of more feel like it's been there forever and maybe it's an old warehouse district and you can walk into the essential mall stay, but we're adding residences where people live, um, and there'll be kind of just a more much more exciting experience, and that bridge was part of that. Right. Um, and we had to vote, there, there was a little more money to put in, but it was really more uh, it, just the things that we vote on a lot that aren't really very interesting in a way are easements, so that the, the two pillars where they have to mm -hmm. put down to hold the bridge up, we have to make sure that legally those pillars can be there. Right. So, so the, the, the old bridge has to come down as part of the demolition right. and, process. Yeah. And so that's coming there down will soon. Be, and there will be a lot of um, updates from the county and from the developer to keep folks informed as to where they can go, what are some of the alternate routes, that kind of thing, while the new bridge is being constructed. But the new bridge is really going to be something special. It really is. And John actually has really made sure that there's another bridge that we don't talk about very much, not even quite part, but it con continues the connectivity so people can easily get to Metro. Exactly. Right. Which so, is really so important to what we do. Folks need to keep in mind they can go seamlessly. For the, they'll, after the new mm -hmm. construction, they'll be able to go from the Metro station a couple blocks away right in, the into the newly revitalized mall. And, you know, when we, we talk about this, well, isn't this just another mall that we're, you know, kind of propping up with public funds? But this is really a signature placemaking, yeah, economic, transformational, is what transformational we're really is. Yeah. Um, economic development um, goal here. Uh, we really think that this is going to, to rev up significantly our tax revenue. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, actually, projections, and, you know, you can talk about numbers and statistics and so forth all you want, but... Um, we feel that the economic modeling that the county has done, reached out to some private consultants to do and so forth, really shows that this is going to be a net gain for the county. Uh, we're investing about $50 million in, in public funds, but it's important to point out we're not just giving this to the developer, to Forest City. This, this public money is going to be used for public infrastructure, streetscape, um, utilities, other improvements uh, in the context of the overall mall. Uh, keep in mind also that the Kettler's Ice Arena is going to be staying, the, the Capitals um, hockey team is going to be staying there, an office building, so it is going to be yeah. mixed use. And the new, the new retail mix in this mall is going to be much more heavily skewed towards, uh, towards uh, dining, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and entertainment. Experiential. Because that's, experiential, that's, people right. want experience. that's, that's where the market is. Because right. after all, right. so many people do right. their shopping online yeah. now. But you can't dine online. I guess you can order food. But, you know. <laughs> Quite not the same. Um, same. <laughs> right. I, I think the other important thing to, to, to point out also is we've made very, very careful decisions from a fiscal responsibility standpoint. Um, the, the Community uh, Development uh, Authority, authority that, that we're forming, the CDA, the bonds that are going to be issued in conjunction with this financing are not going to count against our debt service, our self-imposed debt service limitation right. of 10%. We've talked to the rating agencies. The rating agencies yeah. are not going to be using this as a metric. And um, in part, what's one of the neat things is it's the, the profit from the mall helps cover to pay off pay the bonds. Right. So in there's other words, a, a so tax you're increment sort of, financing right. component of this. Right. We have a look back agreement. So if the project is ever sold, the developer decides to cash in, we'll get a part of that gain. Um, if it's a long term hold for them, we'll also have the opportunity to realize right. back some of our uh, public investment and when you and look we have protections I think that's course. important so we we're protected on the bottom we've we got protections right. and also a way to gain in any unexpected um, advance certainly no guarantees profits, but profits. but we were very careful with this the other thing you know I like to point out is people in Arlington are going out to the mosaic district in Fairfax <laughs> yeah we want them here the mosaic district in Fairfax also has a much higher degree of public financing mm -hmm. than than what we're doing in Boston so we've taken a page from Mosaic, but we think that we're being more conservative, uh, and as well as we've looked at best practices in other areas. Uh, knock on wood, um, this will fly, but we think it's really going to be a signature development. Yeah, it's very exciting. The investment now is going to just really transform Boston 
really kind of make this mall the epicenter of a lot more development that we expect. That's right. And you do a good right. thing like that. You attract more. It's, you get a sort of a synergy going. It's well, really and we a good thing. You know, and we, and we hope that the development is going to be done in a, in a sensitive way to the surrounding neighborhoods, both the multifamily neighborhoods as well as right, the single-family right. neighborhoods. Right. And Forest City's been working pretty well, I think, with everybody. So it's, it looks like a good project. All right. Well, thank you both very much. We're going to take one more short break. And when we come back, we'll talk about a couple of the important contracts that the board approved. Don't go away. We're back with the final segment of this month's County Board Wrap-Up, looking at a few more of the decisions the Board took at its September meeting. Now, in our last segment, we talked about a huge place-making project with Boston Quarter, but there were also several more um, capital improvement projects. Which are just as important for the places where they had place-making. Yeah. For the place-making in those communities. Right, right. Let's start with Aurora Hills. Yeah, sure. Aurora Hills, is a, anybody who knows that facility, is like a senior center, a library. It's right next to a new fire station. It's been needing a facelift for really quite some time. So we actually put in a little more than $500,000. It is a much smaller kind of project, but it's going to make it a lot nicer inside, make it actually ADA compliant, which we've been needing to do, um, and have new furniture, cabinets, HVAC systems. So I think it will feel like you're getting actually a whole lot more than just certified. It'll feel like a new center for really not all that much, um, which I think will be a great um, a, a great addition to the community and just kind of help keep everything upgraded. I mean, that's part of what the placemaking is, and you just have to be constantly at it. Maintenance, I guess, in a way, is what you would call it. Um, but I think it'll provide a much better experience for people. And actually, that reminds me, Libby mentioned that there's a fire station there. So we have a fire station, a senior center, a library, all co-located. So fire stations, whether they're... Uh, on Lee Highway uh, or Wilson Boulevard or in Aurora Hills can really make good neighbors and fit in with their mm -hmm. community. No, Absolutely. Exactly right, exactly right. And then actually speaking of Lee Highway, we had a project there, where, yeah, undergrounding, which I think we hear a lot from um, from people. Why don't you underground the wires? Particularly, you know, we haven't had the storms yet. Hopefully, we won't have a bad winter this year. Uh, but it's it is much better to put the wires underground. One is just it's more you know it's more attractive, um, and you don't have as much problem with you know trees falling on them and that sort of thing. But there's a whole future planned streetscape for Lee Highway, and this is kind of one of the first steps um, to make that come bring that to fruition. Really yeah. So it's a start on a larger on a larger project, um, and that also in the, in the and, you know, it will be more attractive, safer for pedestrians. Uh, I think it will be a lot big improvement. So left turn signals, wider sidewalks, better signalization, mm -hmm. that yep. type of thing. Yeah, someone yeah. who drives through there on a regular basis. Yep. So this right. spring, 2017, <laughs> the work will start. Well, so it. be ready for it. All right. And then finally, we definitely don't want to leave out, there was a very important discussion that took place looking at that issue of short-term rentals, which is something that's relatively new here in the sharing yeah. economy yeah. here in Arlington, but something that's very much of interest to right. Arlingtonians. Let's talk a little well, bit about that. Bed and breakfast is what people think of, and we've had those for a long, for a long time. For a long time. Mm -hmm. but oh, well, not too many, frankly, because we not do, here have, we, no, we do not have many a pretty here. restrictive the ordinance. No, no. Right. But the idea of a bed and breakfast is something that's familiar to people. Now we have this sharing economy. So, you know, with Uber and Lyft, people are sharing cars, and then you've got, the, you know, Airbnb and some Craigslist and vacation rentals, mm -hmm. all you're sharing, you know, private homes online. Um, and what we found was we don't have, because it's so new, we don't have regulate, zoning regulations to handle it. We have people coming to us upset. My neighbor has got people coming and going, and what are you going to do about it? And it's hard. What are we going to do about it? Because it's not, we don't have a format to do that. And then people coming to us and saying, you know, I'd like to be able to rent out my room from time to time. I'd like to be legal. I want to do this the right or way. What do I do? Lot, Travel. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? How do I do this? And we don't right now have regulation. Tell them how to do it. So um, the manager made a report that he's they're going to we're going to come back um, at our October meeting okay. and have a um, we're going to advertise some some regulations and we'll love to hear from people what they they think if they think it will work for them and kind of just get a start on on giving some structure to this sort of brave new world we're in of the sharing economy and I think this will be very helpful for people. Well, and I, and I think another aspect of this is that uh, Arlington, of course wants to maintain as much control uh, and authority over these types of things as possible. The legislature, our, our friends down in Richmond, are also looking at the issue. Um, you know, it was just a year and a half ago when there was kind of that same um, interplay state government and local government with respect to the taxi industry exactly. and, and Uber and Lyft and, and, Uber things, yeah. and Lyft. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, um, 
with the sharing economy now in the kind of in the in the residential realm, um, we're going to be working, uh, attempting to work at least very closely with the state legislature uh, and Richmond. Uh, but we're really interested in having as much control of our own community, our own zoning laws ourselves, um, and try and bring people in from the cold to legitimize appropriate rentals, um, but also be sensitive to the integrity of our single family homes um, and, and, and attendant nuisances that can come with this type of, of thing. Yeah, I was talking to one of our legislators actually just this morning about it a little bit and say it's, it's really, it's just, we're 26 square miles and we're a, a tourist destination and we all need to be able to live together. Um, and so you've got to have some structure and some regulation and this whole new world, as I say, of the sharing economy right. has and come in. We need there to be th almost a thousand. Yeah, in the summer, like 1,600. Right yeah, it goes up and down. Um, so, we, you know, we, we want it, we want people to be safe. We want of them course. to be healthy. We want them to not be, you know, overwhelmed by noise. But we also want to give people flexibility to, you know, make use of their homes and actually make it feel welcoming for people that might want to come here and have a place make to a stay. Make little money, yeah, you know, sure. right, a little pin right. money, that type right. of thing. And you know we're the number one tourist destination in the state, mm -hmm. which makes the challenge even even right. more difficult. But we're going to have a community process. We we want to involve our various commissions: the housing right. commission, the aging commission, the community as a whole. We're going to be getting something up on our county website soon, so that people can interact with us uh, and really hear what folks say, because there's a lot of variables we're going to have to be looking at. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Charlottesville ordinance and and other ordinances around the state, and and see what might be most appropriate for are 225,000 people. Right. And there's a, a lot of talk at the, at the state level as well, correct? Uh, right, oh, right, as we indicated. There's, so right. we're going to be working closely uh, with our with uh, the legislature in Richmond. And what are we hearing from the residents just on both sides of the issues? I know this is a very complex mm -hmm. issue. It's a broad gamut. Well, there was one one woman came to us because she, um, uh, is, is the, our Commissioner of the Revenue found out that she was doing this, said she needs she owed money, taxes. I said, I didn't know. I'm happy to pay. And then it turns out she maybe owes three years back. Mm -hmm. And she, I, I'm happy to pay, but it's so much money. And I didn't know. I mean, that's what you hear a lot. I don't know. Right. said, my neighborhood, we just have a small house. We've got a couple of kids. We're trying to make ends meet, but we have this extra room. And actually, it's all my neighbors that use this room when their families come to visit because the houses are of so course. small. So you've got somebody who's just making a little extra money and it's actually helping the whole neighborhood you know, manage living here in Arlington a little better. And suddenly they're like, I didn't know they want to do the right thing. And, and we need to be able to provide them with some structure. And you could talk a little bit about the complaints because we hear yeah, complaints I mean, too at, and those at, are understandable. At the same time, there, there's, there's aggravations and concerns um, with people coming and going uh, at certain places at all hours of the day, of not, day and night, you know, car doors slamming, um, extra cars on the street or in people's driveways, litter. Um, folks who have kids are concerned about, you know, strangers yeah. in their midst. Um, so, you know, not, not to exaggerate this, but, but people uh, do have legitimate concerns about this type yeah. of, which is really amounts to a business. I sure. mean, if you're right. getting income, right. you're renting it out, you know, on a website, that type of thing, it is a business. So, uh, so we have some yeah. some issues that we're right. going to be dealing. It's with. always you know so dealing with to, the gamut. Yeah, yeah, we need to set some standards. We just, do. Right. I'm yeah. sure this will not be the end of the talks of this no, issue. No, <laughs> it will not. It will not. All right. Well, thank you both very much again. Our thanks to Libby and special thanks to John for his first visit. And that concludes another edition of County Board Wrap Up, our monthly look at the important actions the board takes that affect you and your community. Join us again next month in October for another conversation with County Board Chair Libby Garvey. And who knows, perhaps another special guest. We'll see. Thanks for being with us again today. And don't forget to visit the county website, arlingtonva.us, to learn more about the services, programs, and initiatives your county provides. We'll see you next month.